A two-party system dominated American politics for nearly a century until the decade before the Civil War. First, it was the Federalists and Anti-Federalists, then the Federalists and Democratic Republicans, followed by the Democrats and the Whigs. In the decade before the Civil War, the Whigs disappeared and the Republican Party was founded. Meanwhile, many other parties lived and died in those few years. Today, we have a two-party system that is controlled by the Democratic and Republican parties. The Whig Party was created in 1834 in reaction to the authoritarian policies of Andrew Jackson, such as the creation of the National Bank and the spoil system. Henry Clay and Daniel Webster were the leading founders. The name Whig comes from an English political group that opposed royal tyranny. They called Andrew Jackson King Andrew Jackson. The Whig Party included former National Republicans, conservative members of the Democratic Republican Party, and former members of the Anti-Masonic Party. In the party's 20 years of existence, three of its candidates were elected president. These members included William Henry Harrison, Zachary Taylor, and lastly, Millard Fillmore. The controversy of slavery split the Whigs into two parties. Anti-slavery Whigs were called Conscious Whigs, and the pro-slavery Whigs were called Cotton Whigs. The party disbanded by the end of the Kansas-Nebraska Act in 1854. Many Northern Whigs joined the Republican Party, and many Southern Whigs joined the Democratic Party. A smaller number joined the Know Nothing Party. The Free Soil Party was officially founded in August 1848. The Free Soil Platform focused on homestead law and internal improvements. Edward Channing said of the party, It is based on the repugnance of the Negro. By this, he meant that the Free Soilers wanted their land free of all African American people, free or enslaved. Much like the Republican Party, the Free Soilers were anti-slavery because slavery wanted to expand into the West. In the election of 1848, Martin Van Buren ran on the Free Soil ticket. Van Buren was the eighth president and formerly a Democrat. Born in New York in 1782, Van Buren started his political career in 1821 in the U.S. Senate. Eventually, Van Buren became Andrew Jackson's most trusted member of cabinet and vice president. Van Buren became president in 1836, but he served only one term before the Whigs and William Henry Harrison defeated him in the 1840 election. After his failed re-election attempt, Van Buren joined the Free Soilers and ran for president again in 1848. Again, the Whigs defeated him, and Zachary Taylor became the 12th president. The Free Soilers actually had a hand in their own defeat. By splitting the Whigs' opposition, they gave the Whigs the state of New York. Eventually, the Free Soil movement lost momentum, and by 1854, it was absorbed into the Republican Party. The American Party, also known as the Know Nothing Party, originated in 1849. They named their party Know Nothing because it was a secret organization. When questioned on their beliefs, they would answer with, I know nothing. The majority of the party came from middle and working class Protestant backgrounds. The members strongly opposed immigrants and members of the Catholic Church. They feared Catholics were more loyal to the Pope than to the United States and would try to take over the country. Their intention was to prevent Catholics and immigrants from being elected into office and hired for certain jobs. They had many political successes in the mid-1850s, especially in Ohio, where their candidate, Salmon Chase, was elected governor. At one point, they boasted of having a million members in the Northeast. The party adopted the name American Party in 1854. The party refused to take a stand on slavery and therefore did not run for election in 1860. After that election, many members joined the Republican Party. While Andrew Jackson founded the Democratic Party somewhat seamlessly during the height of his political career, the Republican Party appeared when the issue of slavery crippled the Union. Horace Greeley coined the name Republican. In his newspaper, he said, We should not care much whether those thus united against slavery were designated Whig, Free Democrat, or something else. Though we think some simple thing like Republican would more fitly designate those who had united to restore the Union 
to its true mission of champion and announcer of liberty, rather propagandist of slavery. To the 1850s Republicans, Thomas Jefferson was the original free soiler. Jefferson, the writer of the Declaration of Independence and the founder of the Democratic Republican Party, was a symbol of their equalitarian views. The first Republican meeting was in early 1854 in Recon, Wisconsin. By 1855, the Republicans made up the majority of the House of Representatives. The Republican Party was officially recognized after its first nominating convention on June 17, 1856, where John C. Fremont was nominated for the presidency. Fremont was born a Southerner on January 21, 1832 in Savannah, Georgia. He was an enthusiastic explorer, and his known opposition to slavery led him to the Republican Party, where he quickly rose through the ranks. Like the Free Soilers, the Republicans were a northern party. The Republicans focused on labor rights, the middle class, and homestead. It was not originally an abolitionist party, but it became one in order to keep slavery from expanding into the West. The Homestead Act in 1862 was the Republicans' greatest victory. It said that any adult citizen or intended citizen could acquire 160 acres of government land to live and farm on. The Republican Party was often said to be the rejuvenated Whig Party, but it was not. A more accurate ancestor of the Republican Party is the Free Soil Party. Of all of the political parties that were created during the mid-1800s, the Republican Party has had the most impact. Soon after its creation, Abraham Lincoln, a Republican, abolished slavery, and it is the only one still in existence today. The Constitutional Union Party was created in 1860 when the conflict of slavery between the North and the South broke down the older parties. The party was made up largely of conservative Whigs and former members of the Know Nothing Party. They attempted to avoid the issue of slavery in order to save the Union. Their platform was one of following the Constitution, promoting the Union of the States, and the enforcement of laws. The party was also called the Bell Everett Party, named after their president and vice presidential candidates, John Bell and Edward Everett. The party's greatest support came from border states such as Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee, which were battleground states that feared civil war. Abraham Lincoln was elected president and the party disappeared with the coming of the Civil War. The Constitutional Union Party was, however, one of the last prominent parties to challenge our current two-party system.